Hey Rockbags, it's Jade. Welcome to my annual list where I cover all the upcoming survival games at 50 on show today. I've gone big or go home because I think there's such a wide choice incoming in the next 18 months. I can't guarantee they're all going to be actually good, but there's a big plethora, a big choice in either first person, third person, 2D, MMO, multiplayer or single player narratives. They all fall under the genre of survival and I can't wait to dive deeper into some of these games as they release across all of my survival channels. So if you do find this video useful, please leave a like, make sure you are subscribed for the best in survival games news, guides and coverage. 50 survival games incoming. Pokemon with guns, that's exactly what Power World is, by the looks of things anyway. I ain't gonna lie, this ain't my kind of bag, but so many of my regular rat bags seem to be excited about messing around with these weird creatures and training them to be better shots. It's made by the same people that made Craftopia. It's going to be a multiplayer focused game as well as single player, and it is gonna be releasing in January. Steam at first, but scheduled for consoles at some point in the future. Yeah, let me know if you like this one. Dead Island meets DayZ, but in a tropical paradise. Welcome to Fractured Vale, a social multiplayer PVE and PVP survival experience where you'll be going up against lots of mutants and potentially other players as you try and survive. Long in development, it was scheduled to release in 2023, but it's now been pushed back to January the 18th with a full blown release date. With a big focus on building exploration and dungeon questing, Hopefully Fractured Veil vale is going to scratch maybe that PvE, PvP itch with special save zones and areas for you to build where hopefully you won't get raided every two seconds. Enshrouded will undoubtedly be one of the biggest survival games of 2024. It came out of nowhere earlier on this year, or has it? It's actually been worked on by the same people that made Portal Knights, and this is what they've been doing for the last few years. It's promising to be a 16-player co-op PvE voxel exploration survival sandbox game. <gasps> You'll be running into this drow, taking on all sorts of monsters in a kind of fantasy medieval style vibe as you customise your character to either be a mage, a warrior, or whatever else in between. It became one of the most wishlisted games on Steam with the help of a decent demo back in a few months ago and it's looking shaping up to be one of the biggest hits of the year. Also plans to come to console in the far future, this is going to be a huge game when it launches. Voxel style base building, this game seems to have it all and it's definitely going to be one of the biggest games of the year. 24th of January, look out for it on Steam first. And Shrouded is probably only second behind Nightingale for me personally in my most hyped survival games incoming. 22nd of February this game will finally launch. It's had a few delays and it's promising a co-op survival sandbox experience set in a gas lamp fantasy punk world. I've probably got something wrong there. The idea is that you'll be running around with early access launch with up to six players creating realms that will be able to gather resources, take on all sorts of fantastical mythological enemies and build the estates and bases of your dreams. With big bosses, apex predators and unique ways to get around the map, early access launch is shaping up to be something pretty special with a focus on magic as well as typical weapons and armour. I'm expecting big things to come from Nightingale over the next few years and hopefully a console release. But February is a packed month, it is launching at the same day as Sons of the Forest comes out of early access and there's a few other games trying to offer some sort of competition. One of them games is Pacific Drive, maybe a bit more of a roguelike than a true survival sandbox experience. This game will have you running around Washington State try and survive against all sorts of crazy anomalies as you upgrade your family station wagon to try and get you from A to B. With a focus on doing these runs to gather resources to get better upgrades and hopefully, yeah, get better runs. It's got a unique premise, it's also coming to PlayStation 5 exclusively, hopefully not forever, but maybe just limited, and I'm expecting this to really be something unique. You will be exploring on foot, not just in your beaten up station wagon, Massive crazy storms and all sorts of shenanigans that seemingly have a spooky vibe to it. I'm expecting big things for Pacific Drive when it launches on the same day as Nightingale. A really unique premise. Let's hope no one's shouting out, are we there yet? Can't wait to get my hands on this in February. And you thought we were done with February. Nope, we've got Winter Survival, formerly known as Winter Survival Simulator, I do believe. This one's been one of them that's been around on Steam for a while in various demos and prologues. Imagine long dark, but maybe a bit more ferocious and a bit more tailored as you try and survive in the cold wilderness. 
What this will offer something different is the fact that you will be able to base build or take over areas and make them your own fortifications against the creatures and the bitter cold. Single player only coming to Steam first. Robin Hood Sherwood Builders is another one of them that's had various demos and prologues over the years on Steam but it looks to be making an actual release date of some point in quarter one. I like the idea of this, it's more of an RPG but also got that city builder vibe where you can plan out your settlement as you upgrade and get things like a blacksmith and all sorts more and hopefully get yourself better gear to take on various enemies and bosses in a semi open world. So yeah, I'm predicting a March release for this on Steam. Do you yearn for a nice cozy life, you and your mech suit on an alien planet growing crops and hopefully building up your encampment? That's pretty much what Lightyear Frontier is offering, a 1-4 to co-op focus game coming to PC and Xbox. A vibrant, lush, colourful world that hopefully you'll be able to harness resources and get new upgrades and maybe unravel a mystery or two. Will it have enough survival mechanics in it to really warrant a title or actually appearing in this video? I'm not sure, but it's got certain things that will really appeal to me and definitely be giving it a check when it launches in March. Piona is a number of MMOs I'll be looking at in this video today and this one's obviously got more of a shooter stalker style vibe and it is going to be coming out I reckon in 2024. It's been one of them games that's been worked on for a number of years. Escape from Tarkov versus Stalker as you shoot all sorts of crazy creatures, try and gather resources and protect yourself against other players in possible PvP special zones while you come back to settlements to sell and upgrade your gear. So maybe on a looter shooter style side of things rather than straight up open world survival. But I'm really digging it, I really like the aesthetic, I kind of like the vibe it's got and it's actually shown off a bunch of proper gameplay as well as some nice CGI trailers. Lots of NPCs to have some dialogue with, so I can only presume it's got a decent story as well. Pina Awakening could scratch maybe that itch that the day before was meant to provide. Aloft has had a demo that's been updated more than I've actually seen full blown games in the last year or so. I love the look of this, it's come on leaps and bounds, a huge improvement on the graphics and just the vibe and the feel. It's a sandbox survival game where you'll be roaming around these sky high islands but not just that, you can actually make one of these islands your own personal airship and base. Really cool premise and it's leading the pack of a huge amount of games now focused on exploring islands in the sky or using some sort of air travel. The latest demo was super super polished, you will be able to play it with your friends as well as it's adding co-op and I'm expecting this to release in the first half of the year, it's also going to be coming to console as well. Honestly really really impressed, go and give the demo a try, it's got a cartoony vibe to it and it's a fairly simple combat situation but really really absolutely looking forward to this. What if you had Escape from Tarkov style mechanics, i.e. you need to get into a location, get the loot and get out, but you had zombies roaming around and may have to contend with other players. That's what Nakwon Last Paradise is offering. Made by the same studio that I do believe made Dave the Diver, or publisher at least anyway, this could be good. We had Vigor come out a few years ago and that was kind of meant to be this looter shooter extraction survival experience, but I never really gelled with that one as much. Hopefully this kind of stealth based and maybe a bit more scary with the zombies running around will make us feel a little bit more heightened tension. I'm expecting release first half of the year. Return to Nangrim fulfills your dwarven dreams of being a master blacksmith. Pretty much a simulation game of how you can craft and get the best weapons and armour, but it does have a proper actual world to go and explore and survive in. You'll be using your brand new crafted super weapons against all manner of nasty deadly creatures. Another game that's been long in gestation that will be coming out hopefully soon as they're about to retire the free demo they've had for a while. Single player experience only, I can't wait to delve into this and spend many an hour making the most overpowered spoons. Imagine if Half-Life was actually a full blown survival game, that's pretty much the concept behind Abiotic Factor. This is a madcap co-op focus game where you'll be surviving in a science facility that's been overrun by all sorts of creatures. It's a on purpose retro looking style game and I'm absolutely loving it. You have to set up defences and fortifications wherever you make your base in any part of the facility and get ready to explore multiple dimensions by the looks of things and take on huge boss like creatures. Will you unlock the technology needed to survive? Can you get across this game without any reference at all to Freeman? Let me know. 
Okay, this is an official warning not to actually purchase Bell Wright until you see some proper reviews and it definitely seems like it's going somewhere because the developers of this game are the same people behind Last Oasis, which was pretty much abandoned. If that wasn't bad enough, the actual publishers of this game are Snail Games, the people that have run Ark Survival Evolved down into the ground and many, many other games releasing on Steam like Dark and Light and more that never got completed. It somehow is gaining traction, other creators maybe not caring about its past and maybe just looking at the potential. But having covered Last Oasis extensively and seeing what just went wrong with that, I really wouldn't trust this game at all. It's meant to be a co-op medieval survival experience, PvE focused doing missions as you build up your settlements and your base. But yeah, definitely check out reviews for this as it's scheduled for release early, early part of 2024. First Dwarf is a survival game where you are a dwarf but in a mech suit, utilising all sorts of air travel to go and explore floating islands. You'll be gathering resources, setting up automation and encampments so that you can gather even more but also defend yourself against creatures. It's got some throwback stuff that I'm really appreciating like a split screen. It's been announced as coming to PC and Xbox as well. Not only will you control your dwarf alongside a big mech suit, there's also a little dragon that you can fly around and check out the landscape and look for more precious resources or use it to combat against these purple alien dimension swapping creatures. They've had demos up in the past or they may have one coming up soon as it's listed on Steam, so definitely going to be giving this one a show in 2024. Honeycomb The Well Beyond is a survival sandbox experience where you'll be doing all sorts of experimentations. You are a bioengineer and there's going to be challenges in crossbreeding plants, animals as you gather resources, craft items and set up your base. It's got a unique process planning stage where you can actually give some control to a drone by the looks of things that will actually just build your base for you. It is a single player experience only coming to Steam. I'm hopeful we'll see the light of day on other platforms in the future as well. A nice colourful game, getting some real Subnautica on land vibes and I'm hoping to make some monstrous creations once I start splicing genes. Interestingly coming to all platforms as well by looks of things, looking forward to this. Towers of Agasbal, formerly known as Just Towers, is a game that I've been keeping an eye on for a long, long time. It got announced a good few years ago and people couldn't believe that this was actually a game that had only been made over the last year. They then went silent as they looked for backers and they finally got it and have been producing and making the game ever since. It is an open world experience where you'll be building vast settlements and growing sprawling ecosystems on your own fantasy island. You'll have to fight to protect it against unknown dark forces but you can play this with your friends as well, invite them to your world or join in theirs. It was the creatures in this game that really blew me away with their very unique looks. I'm hoping that this co-op focus where it's a bit of a different vibe kind of reminded me of like Viva Panata trying to grow and help your ecosystem to thrive and survive is going to be the main focus of the game rather than just completing quests and challenges. Steam first may be also a PlayStation exclusive in the future. Under a Rock is a colourful, vibrant, procedurally generated world for you to go and explore with up to 10 other players. A tropical paradise left untouched, you'll encounter Neanderthals, all sorts of prehistoric creatures that you'll be able to also tame as you gather resources to build your tiki hut abodes and try and survive. Exploring the darkest caves and hopefully coming across fantastical monuments without getting killed and then going in a dip for the beautiful water and seeing if you can maybe catch a ride on one of the mounts and tames that you'll be able to. You'll be able to create your own character and it's promising to come to consoles in the future as well. Been promoting and supporting this a long time and it's already gathering a lot, a lot of traction. I think this is going to be one of the biggest games going if it manages to get right later on in 2024. Once Human is a multiplayer open world survival game set in a strange post-apocalyptic future. Unite with friends to fight monstrous enemies, uncover secret plots, compete for resources and build your own territory. Once you were merely human, now you have the power to remake the world. This game has absolutely popped off with its strangeness, especially in recent weeks as it's had a demo that you're able to get access to by signing up, although there does seem to be a queue in how they're releasing the keys for it. I'm not going to lie, this straight up went past me over the last year or so. I had never heard of it until only recently. 
So I'm hopefully going to sign up and give you more of a lowdown about this game in the future. Given it's got so many demos up and running or beta tests, I fully expect a release date to be announced for the early half of this year. Are you going to be brave enough to survive on your own? Apparently it's got base building as well, as well as settlement areas you'll be able to trade. Let me know. Star Rupture was formerly known as Chimera. It only got announced a little while ago, but they've already had a name change to get away from the fantasy vibe and really enforce that this is a sci-fi game. Effectively, what would Satisfactory be like if it had combat and you had to defend yourself against multiple creatures? That's what Star Rupture is aiming for. Up to four other players, you can go and build a base set up automation and explore an alien world but you have to be careful for these anomalies and weather events that could potentially wipe out all your progress. It's made by the same development team that made Green Hell and looks to be their next big project. They've started ramping up dev blogs so I fully expect this to come out at some point in 2024. Green Hell has been a major success selling up to 4 million copies I do believe, maybe even more now. I really like the premise of this particular game though, the idea of that automation with that base defence, I think it's something pretty unique in a first person style view and looking forward to Star Rupture coming out. Breath Edge was a cult hit, it was in early access for a good while and then a full release actually got a lot of people playing it. It's got a humorous take on sci-fi as you were meant to survive in space. Well, it looks like they've shifted some of that now, you'll be actually exploring different planets. It looks to be co-op focused as well now. And I'm guessing customising your own spaceship to travel between A and B and hopefully survive as you gather new resources and come across new life forms. The first game, like I said, wasn't everyone's taste. Some people still feel like it needed a lot more work, but let's hope that Breath Edge 2 manages to nail it. So a slew of MMOs coming up now. Pax Die recently had a playtest and everyone was marvelling at the building mechanics in this MMO, especially focused on medieval fantasy. General consensus was that the building and the world looked good, but it did kind of not have enough meat on it. So the developers do seem to be adding a lot more. They're going to have lots of questing, obviously lots of combat improvements added in the future, and I fully expect this to release by the end of the year. It's not just a cosy base builder game though, you will have factions by looks of things and PvP, and hopefully helping other players to try and defend against some of the larger groups that may come along and try and eat up the landscape. Dune Awakening is about to begin a plethora of beta tests as we're looking for a release late one this year. It is a MMO survival open world sandbox experience where yes there will be PvP base building, think Conan Exiles, that's because it's made by Funcom, the same people. But now set in the world of Arrakis as you try and hunt down the spice and try and protect what's yours. What I really like the idea of is indeed the vehicles and a slightly more sci-fi take, obviously giving us the ability to hopefully have some sort of projectile weapons, although maybe not direct firearms. Just got to be a bit wary of battle passes and microtransactions as their publisher Tencent do love them. If that's all a bit too much action and excitement, maybe something a bit more chill. This is Bitcraft, again something that's been worked on for a long time now. It's offering more of a social kind of MMO where you'll meet other players and you'll have specific roles that you have to fulfil to help your tribe and your settlements grow. Promising a huge world to go and explore, come across hundreds upon hundreds of other players with these strange alien-like little life forms taking to the seas to explore other continents without hopefully getting mangled by storms. Again, another one that's had lots of alphas and hopefully betas incoming. Very unique take. Is it going to be good enough without maybe actual combat and stuff? We'll have to wait and see. If you still thirst for blood, then maybe Renown will be something you'll enjoy. Literally rust, but set in the medieval world. That's exactly what the devs have coined it. And it seems to be improving every time I see snippets of the alphas that have been running. So yes, you'll be base raiding with siege warfare and hopefully trying to get the spoils with maybe a slight kind of chivalry style combat system. But of course really being separate apart from some of the previous games by having the ability to build your own bases, set up alliances and become a ruler of a kingdom. Hope to really see a concrete date for early access for renown in 2024. After the success of Medieval Dynasty, it seems Toblitz have gone on a bit of a rampage. Wild West Dynasty, then we had Sengoku Dynasty, and now Vampire Dynasty? Yeah, I don't know, it looks pretty janky to me, 
but people seem to love this series, even if Wild West Dynasty was really bad. Obviously, maybe also jumping on the hype of V Rising. I can well imagine the meeting that took place. What can we do next in the Dynasty series? Oh, I've been really enjoying V Rising. What if we made that, but actually made it third person? Very surprised if this doesn't release by the end of 2024. I nearly made this video about three weeks ago and I'm so glad I didn't as Light No Fire got announced only recently. This is the next follow up game from Hello Games, the makers of No Man's Sky. You won't be exploring a universe here, instead it's going to be one Earth like sized planet where you'll be able to build and fulfill your dreams in a fantasy world. You can take on the role of a magical caster, perhaps a blade for hire as you and your friends base build settlements and hopefully try and survive. It has got a huge amount of customization by the looks of things in terms of the characters that you'll be able to play, the creatures you can tame, ride and the combat mechanics that are shown off very very fast. I mean who doesn't want to ride some dragons? Cue that ever reliable commenter, oh yeah but No Man's Sky was crap. Yeah fair comment, it was at launch but over the years it's become one of the best supported games going, going above and beyond what many many games would deem complete and actual adding more content. There's been a huge promotional push from Hello Games across social media advertising this game. It looks like they've had an incubator team working on it for a number of years and maybe some of them now are more transitioning over from No Man's Sky. So yeah, I'm predicting a release date of this year. Having made lots of mistakes in the past with marketing hype and over promising, they may want to just actually get it out the door only when it was deemed actually ready and able to. A huge procedure generated Earth, i.e. one planet, is it going to be interesting enough? Is it going to sustain players hopefully to survive we'll have to wait and see when it actually comes out hopefully this year from the makers of worlds adrift a cancelled mmo survival game where you had control of your own airship as you explore the skies this is lost skies more of a focus now on co-op survival with you and your friends as you traverse again lots of islands in the sky had a nice snazzy animated trailer reveal only a few months ago and devs have been shown off more and more snippets of gameplay. I would say I expect to see this maybe towards the late end of the year. Worlds of Drift ended up being a bit of a cult hit and many people were sad to see it actually not fulfilled as a proper full game. Now with many more years experience, let's hope they can nail it this time with Lost Skies, which seemingly has a lot of the same stuff going on. Customizable airships, making use of your grapple and hopefully wingsuits. So many games with Sky Islands, I probably should give it its own section. Outbreak Island has been another one of them games that's had multiple demos and prologues. Is it actually finally going to reveal later on this year? I think so. They've changed the scope of this game quite dramatically and have gone a bit silent sometimes in between. What started out seemingly as a single player story focused game as you go and explore some sort of mystery on a strange island is now going to be maybe more open world and survival focused. You'll encounter rogue troops and possibly bandits as well as more supernatural goings ons. I like the idea of this and it definitely has a potential. A bunch of demos like I said I've tried in the past showed glimpses of what could be on offer but it seemed like it needed a lot more work. And I guess that time has hopefully been spent well and we will see an actual release in 2024. If you prefer more 2D survival style games then maybe Disponia is for you. This was meant to be coming out in early access in 2023 but it's hard to change it now and will be a full release game. Can't say I've ever played this series of games. I do believe they're more story focused or maybe RTS, but this is a survival game in the mold of Don't Starve that will be coming out in 2024. Maybe mixed in with a little bit more Stardew Valley S stuff going on with quests and NPCs. A Ground Zero is a somewhat sequel to A Ground, which was a 2D survival experience game. Now they're going first person and it seems to be focused on automation as you pretty much try and survive in caves that give me kind of Minecraft vibes. Colours are a bit garish, but I think that's part of the appeal, the design and art of it. And yeah, it's obviously set in the far future where the previous game was more of a prehistoric take. You'll need to hopefully rescue NPCs to help you gather more resources or maybe help you speed up production and fight off against weird creatures. Factory games are massive and yeah, I can see the appeal of this for sure. Even if it is a bit weird. 
With all the controversy that surrounded Ark Ascended, the remaster of the original Survival Evolved, you'd be forgiven for thinking that Ark 2 has had a delay. Well, not apparently, it's still meant to be coming out at the end of 2024. I know everyone's going to laugh, of course this will be delayed, but that's the current thinking. Supposedly taking a huge dollop of inspiration from Souls-like games in terms of changing and revamping Ark's combat, but it's still going to have all the usual bells and whistles, multiplayer, open world, PvP and base building, with Ark Ascended seemingly designed to test the technology needed for this game and to help give them enough money and resources to carry on developing it. I'm not a big fan of the Vin Diesel story plotline, but hey, we'll have to see how it goes if it does actually release at the end of 2024. Build the ultimate Viking settlement and survive with your villagers, land your ship in a foreign, ever-changing realm, make it your own and discover its secrets. This is Aska, a Norse-inspired survival game where, yeah, you'll be hopefully gathering NPCs to live in your village as you base build and take on quests and try and survive. Again, lots of beta has been happening this year, so I fully expect a release at some point in 2024. It's got a unique take, got very kind of RPG style mechanics. And yeah, I like the idea that you'll have to really manage maybe some of the NPCs to actually help you survive, gather resources, or just be your protection. A single player game, but it does apparently have some sort of online co-op as well. And yeah, looks interesting. Terraria merged with Satisfactory then you might have something like Minicology. It's a survival sandbox where, yeah, you'll be designing factories, fighting bosses, and building a mini empire across a mini universe. Seems to have a huge amount of depth to it and the crafting systems of games like Minecraft, where you literally have to place items and resources to get the schematic you really want. Building up enough of the resources to hopefully carry on your adventures to more planets. Lots of interactive crafting, and yes, a heavy focus on automation. It's going to be a single player experience, it had a demo up last year so I'm expecting it to release this and yeah it's interesting vibe, a unique take on 2D survival. The signal has you venturing into an uncharted alien planet filled with wonder and peril, explore and survive by leveraging your creativity to craft infrastructure, equipment and vehicles of your own designs, awaken the dormant secret of a one of a kind planet in an expedition of 1 to 16 players. That's the Steam blurb, but what does it really offer? It seemingly has the creativity of games like Scrap Mechanic, but offering a real big focus on story and mystery as you try and solve puzzles on an alien planet. Utilising your crafting and building skills, this is how you'll actually get there and try and unearth the mystery. In fact, it's got 1 to 16 co-op as well, seems like it's going for a really big multiplayer focus. But no PvP in this one, just strictly PvE. So yeah, I'm down for this. The trade up, while mixing a lot of CGI with maybe a couple hints of actual gameplay mechanics, looks snazzy enough. And hopefully find out more info about this game in 2024. The Axis Unseen is a heavy metal horror game created by one of the developers of Skyrim, Starfield and Fallout. Hunt nightmarish monsters from ancient folklore in a mysterious open world, collecting their enhanced sense powers and discovering elemental arrows Beware, the hunter is always the hunted. I am not too impressed with the focus on heavy metal music, but actually it's grown on me. Every time I see clips of this, I'm like, yeah, okay, I can maybe dig this. Of course, that can be turned off. The focus really will be on the combat and the exploration. Is this going to be an interesting world to go and roam around? And are these going to be interesting creatures to take on? Made by a solo developer, I'm rooting for it in 2024. Kibu is a cute and cosy game on the outset, but dive deeper and you'll actually find it's got a combat focus as you explore a supposedly tranquil world. You're trying to build up your temple by crafting delicious teas, and that's the premise of this game. You'll journey and explore trying to find ancient spirits, gathering resources to build up your own homestead, and hopefully farm and make delicious teas. It sounds pretty cool and interesting, and I kind of like the art style. Another 2D survival game now, one that's been on the horizon a while, Wonderlost. This is a don't starve kind of homage, I'm guessing, but I've played this and it's pretty cool. It's definitely got its own unique art style, taking on enemies as you explore a 2D landscape, gathering resources and building up a base. You'll be hunting creatures, fighting for survival against bears and maybe taking on the odd zombie or two. So yep, yeah, been on my hit list for a long time, hoping to see its release in 2024. 
I have said repeatedly that Sky Island seemed to be the new meta in survival, as there's another one now, Solarpunk. This is a more of a cute farming simulator game, growing your crops and living out your life on a Sky Island. This time though, you'll have your own dedicated airship to go and gather resources and harness the power of weather to hopefully power up your constructions and crafting. Another one of them successful Kickstarter programs, it's promising co-op multiplayer in the future, and yeah, just offering a bit more of a chilled experience. So there we go, that's pretty much my predictions and what I found with games hopefully releasing in 2024. Beyond that, we have got a slew of titles that I think will end up coming out in 2025. This is Blight Survival, quickly gained hundreds of thousands of wish lists when it got revealed. It's pretty much a PvE escape from Tarkov medieval experience. At first glance at least, anyway, you'll be fighting off against the undead as you try and gain new weapons and gear while exploring semi-open worlds. Up to four players can take part in these special maps and yeah, the idea is to survive against the undead as you get new items and hopefully craft better gear. The devs have been teasing a lot of progress in action and yeah, fingers crossed this will launch in 2024 but more than likely 2025. Imagine Rust, but it's a desert landscape with steampunk engines that will act as your bases. That's what Sand is promising. Apart from a heavy focus CGI trailer and a few screenshots, not much else is really known. It's made by a Ukrainian team, so it may end up being quite a while before we see it actually come to release. But from what I gathered before in previous videos that looking at it, yes, you'll be able to customize and build your own trampler and you'll use this to get across the landscape and hopefully take on other players and get better resources. Little vibe of Last Oasis, maybe not as clunky, certainly looking a bit more formidable, these tramplers. I'm down for any new PvP experiences that can add something to the survival genre. My second channel, JPG Crafted, has been devoted pretty much to Grounded over the last couple of years, and obviously games like Smallland 2. So why not add another game into that mix where you're tiny? This is Infinitesimals. It really might not end up being a full-blown survival game, but it certainly has me intrigued. The idea that you're like this little bug alien exploring a huge overgrown world using your massive aircraft airship to get across landscapes and hopefully jetson and take on lots of enemies. Big focus on shooting mechanics and obviously third person as well as using your vehicles and other ways to traverse. Another one I've watched for a number of years from a tiny little development team, an Epic Games Store exclusive. It's kind of crazy that State of Decay got announced in 2020, yet we may not really see it until 2025. But maybe that delay is for good reason. They're looking to maybe have this as their true original vision, a proper open world MMO style survival game. Or at least a bigger focus on multiplayer where you'll be taking on zombies, zombie creatures and maybe other players. That's been on the rumour mill for a while now, ever since the CEO of the original company behind State of Decay pretty much said this as he left the company. It's reportedly had troubled development, hence why it's taken also so long. And with COVID hitting, they decided to focus a lot on keeping State of Decay 2 alive with more content incoming, which has been received pretty well. But now I think the time is to see if this game is going to take off or not. I'm hoping to see some news about State of Decay 3 this year with an announcement date for 2025. Maybe unfair, but nowadays everyone's going to be looking at PvP open world survival games with very much some distrust after the day before crashed and burned. I too am a bit more skeptical of games like these, especially when they've got Kickstart and crowdfunding behind them, promising the world and maybe taking forever to deliver. But Rooted does seem to have a little bit more about it. It first got showed off and everyone was crying out, oh my god, it's a Last of Us multiplayer game. Absolutely, I think that is the vibe. You're going to be focused on raiding the city to get resources and coming back out to the countryside for your home. 2025 at the earliest for me. Sky, the Misty Isle has again been another one I kept an eye on for a long, long time. It's going to offer a open world, again, Norse inspired Viking experience. Not only will you be able to play on the Isle of Sky, and it's going to be pretty much photorealistic, or that's the plan, encompassing the whole actual island made by developers from the Isle of Sky in the Scottish outline region. It may even have a prologue set in Norway. 
So some really cool ideas, we'll have to see how it actually pans out being a multiplayer open world survival experience. But yeah, small little team working on this, the pictures and visuals have been gorgeous, I'm hoping to see more news about it in 2024. The next Minecraft, maybe. Hytale has been hyped up by everyone who really wants to see this succeed. Made by former developers of some of the high pixel servers, they've now got the backing of Tencent and help from Riot Games. Pretty much regular dev blogs, but sometimes outlining big massive long delays we really haven't had much to look forward to in terms of release dates. So I'm hoping that 2024 will see a lot more info taking part in alphas and betas and finally be able to actually give it a shot in 2025. Create your own games, have obviously mini games set on servers, customization and even build and content create within the world. Hytale is promising much, let's see if it can deliver. There's a whole host of dinosaur survival games I probably could have included but I'm fully expecting a lot of them to come out in 2025 and so until then I'm just being a bit more sparing. Gonut has been on my actual interest for a long time. It started out as seemingly a Green Hell style game but with dinosaurs being the main challenge. There's no building huge bases and raiding other players in this one. They've shown off lots of dev blogs in the past and then gone really quiet. Then had a playable demo that some tubers got access to before finally being bought out by a publisher right it seems and getting the funding they need to hopefully make this a reality. It's going to have big competition now though with the recently announced Jurassic Park survival which I've not included because it is a single player horror survival game rather than more focused on crafting which Gona is supposedly going to be. But absolutely it's got to pick its moment and hopefully get some sort of traction soon. Amazingly, Little Devil Inside is now approaching 10 years since its initial reveal and following Kickstarter campaign. It's taken that long for it to actually come to fruition. Originally developed for the Wii U, it's been changed and moved so many times that I think most people have forgotten about it. It is meant to be a Monster Hunter style kind of aesthetic game where you roam around certain environments and areas looking for monsters, gathering resources and crafting materials to get better gear. Also with a unique Japanese RPG overworld map for you to explore, it definitely has piqued my interest for a long time. They've shown off seemingly really cool demos and gameplay of it and then we've just not heard anything for like a year straight. I had a tentative release date of 2022 that got pushed back and we haven't seen anything since. So the likelihood is it's another failed experiment, but it'd be such a shame. I'm looking forward to seeing if this ever sees the light of day. A lot of these games have been made by solo developers and Derelicts is another one of them. Imagine returning to Earth after a long long time to find that mutants have overrun it and you've now got to try and survive. That's pretty much the premise behind Derelicts. Adding again more automation and slight factory building to an open world filled with dangers. This blew me away with some of its visuals when I first saw it and I'm intrigued to see if it can actually fulfill its potential and become a released game in 2024 or 2025. Base building, yep, harvesting, gathering resources and shotgunning mutants to the face as well as being able to pet your own doggo. And now finishing off with the piece de resistance, Subnautica 3 or the next game in the Subnautica universe is supposedly incoming. Now the devs were kind of maybe a bit miscommunicating here hyping up that they were looking forward to showing what's on store, what's incoming soon, and maybe gave the illusion that we'd see this in 2024. By the looks of things, it would be very late 2024, but I'm predicting 2025 now for early access launch. Original banking statements from their publisher studio suggested 2025 anyway, and yes, it does look like they're going to be going down the early access route. There are hints that this will be a very different style game, maybe big multiplayer focused, maybe even live service, We'll have to wait and actually see. But there's no doubt about it. One of the most successful survival series in recent years. Whatever comes next, people are hopefully going to be hyped for. And there we go. If you got this far, well done you. You really love survival games and want to hear about all sorts, not just the same, same old. I'll be diving into each one and every single game that I've mentioned as they approach, giving you news, updates, release dates, and of course previews and coverage once it's actually here. So if you found this video useful, please make sure you like it, make sure you are subscribed, and I'll see you for what is going to be a promising start to 2024. Until next time, Ratbags, I'll catch you later.